Brace yourself for another shocking twist in the Moms for Liberty's moral crusade. In this tangled web, the only thing more twisted than their moral compass is their sense of irony. From falsely accusing drag queens to fabricating tales about librarians, Moms for Liberty have tried to make themselves the moral police. But a founder's husband is under police investigation for alleged sexual assault. They all agree there is a mutual sexual relationship outside of their Christian marriage for a year. I wonder how that'll go over with the next church potluck. Some have already abandoned their clown car, including DeSantis, who said it's time to go. They are more like a tabloid than a political movement. For Mons for Liberty, the one thing harder to defend in their positions is political relevance. In this circus of scandal, it seems the real illusion is their credibility. And Scott, I, I know you really like this group. What what did what did you think about them? <laughs> well, it it I I guess it's you know in a way it's not really all that surprising. We see this kind of stuff happen all the time. These people up on the high horse, uh, getting knocked off by their own actions. And so, uh, but one thing I need I think we need to consider though is that um, you know Moms for Liberty is an organization of other human beings. And so we should expect there to be human qualities amongst their groups. You know, they say that there, there's uh, uh, assholes in every group, right? And, every, and there's saints and assholes in every group. And so, so I think we can, uh, you know, following along with that uh, um, dictum, that it makes sense that we would expect this kind of thing. Um, but also, you know, I have to admit, humans like you know, when nasty people get their comeuppance, right? They, they, I do feel a sense of superior superiority when I, when I hear stories like this. So I guess the, the real irony here is that humans just love pointing out hypocrisy in others. And that's kind of what, what's happening here. Having said that, these people just really suck. And so if this is something that all humans experience, why do we see it happen so much in, in these groups? It seems to be happening more on the, on the conservative religious and the conservative political end of the spectrum. Um, you know, I hate to sound like a, a, a broken record, but I think on this point it's worth repeating. And that is that there is robust evidence supporting the idea that political and religious conservatism go hand in hand with authoritarian, um, sorry, authoritarianism and dogmatism. And so we're talking about ideologies that value things like loyalty and purity, and they're repulsed by anything that they think uh, is impure. And it, and it boils down to shame. It's, so this is a result of shame. Uh, I found a report from the Journal of the Canadian Academy of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry. They said, um, unrepaired shame as an organizing emotion in the process of identity formation is argued to create particular vulnerabilities to stigmatization. Sometimes the hardest barriers to overcome may rest within the adolescent as the shame nurtured by parents, shame nurtured by parents, leads to subsequent, subsequent self-loathing created by the culture and religious value systems. Negative feelings about oneself can be internalized and, the result, and result in shame, denial, self-harm, and hatred and abuse of others. And so I think that's what's happening here. The emotional immaturity of adolescents may lend itself to them choosing self-hatred and anger as coping mechanisms, okay? So there's shame happening when these people are young, they get older, they see these, these qualities in themselves that leads them to self-loathing. And then of course that leads, they can turn that, the, the dissonance uh, that, that come up as a result of that self-loathing uh, causes them to turn that hate outward. One little, uh, another quote here, uh, for all that self-hatred, as I said, can lead straight into the hatred of others. This is from Psychiatric Times by Dr. S uh, H. Stephen Moffick. He says, for such a common and destructive feeling, hate has been understudied by psychology and psychiatry. Freud, though, did positive a psychologic, uh, posit a psychological mechanism for hate, that being projection, right? So we're going to be talking about projection on, in this one. Uh, in projection, perceived personal badness is psychologically transferred upon to others. Uh, in other words, for hatred, we can consciously or unconsciously dislike things within ourselves and want to disown them. I'm not terrible. You are, that kind of thing. So now where that hatred goes depends on individual and group relationships. This last sentence I thought was very uh, important here. Cultish ways of controlling and distorting thinking can intensify the hatred. So my point here is that we shouldn't be all that surprised that 
Uh, these types of stories of hypocrisy show up so often because it's baked right into their ideology. Eli, what's your take on it? I, I yeah, I think you said a lot of things that just better than the way I could have said it. Um, I I wasn't familiar a lot with uh, a lot of the things the Mothers for Liberty were doing, um, so I, I I kind of I looked on their website. I, I've heard about them on the show, of course, before and in other things, but I looked at their website, find a little about the uh, M4L Foundation. I'm like, okay, what do they do? Like, they're doing some charity. That's cool. They donate books to school libraries. And, and this distracts <laughs> from the point a little bit. But I'm like, okay, like, what kind of books do they donate? This one is called An Elephant is Not a Bird. Oh, this must be about how evolution is not real. That's cute. Oh, no, wait. This is about how dressing like a different species doesn't mean that now you can fly. That's gross. So that's the liberty that they're concerned with, is the liberty to marginalize groups of people because they don't exist the way that you expect that they should, not the liberty to exist the way that you would like to. So, and it does, it, it, I really, like, like I said at first, you said a lot of things that I would have said just better because I do think it is this psychological projection where they have this shame about their own you know, like humans have sexual desires. Humans are sexual beings and they have this shame about their own desires and they project that out onto others. And possibly because of that shame nurtured by parents that even adults that I know now that have kind of shameful attitudes towards sex, just because that's what they were taught to believe about it. And um, it doesn't, they don't really ever take the time to realize like, no, that's just a kind of a natural thing. So like, if this was just a story about threesomes, like there's no story because th th that doesn't, that's not a thing that matters. But these uh, conservative groups that love to claim moral superiority, whether that be um, sexual morality or whatever it may be, they almost always have this, this, hidden side that they're just trying to cover up. They're trying to shine the spotlight away from them because if I can get everybody looking at everyone else, nobody is going to look at me and see what I'm doing because I'm embarrassed and I'm ashamed of what I'm doing. And that I think is the crux of it. And the really horrible thing about it is because these people, people are ashamed of things they have no reason to be ashamed of. And for that reason, they're going on to project hate and, shame and vitriol onto others just for existing the way they like to exist. And, uh, you know, as you mentioned in the opener, I'm sure the Ziegler's would have you believe that, you know, sex is between a married man and a married woman, but that of course didn't stop them from inviting a third on more than one occasion into their marriage, which again, like that's not an issue. That's their choice. And the choice of that, you know, third person, as long as they're a consenting adult, there's no reason any of us need to care about that. It's, of course, the story here, the issue is when there were not consenting adults. And, and you know, um, it's interesting to see. I'm glad to actually see that there are some consequences for not just the Ziegler's, but Mothers for Liberty as well. Uh, on December 5th, um, I believe it was NBC News posted that there was a Pennsylvania chapter of Mothers for Liberty that uh, was chaired by Clarissa Page, and they're disaffiliating from Mothers for Liberty as a result of the foundation's response to these allegations against Christian Ziegler. And it's interesting to see that not only are they losing the support from outside, they're falling apart from inside as well. And Infidel, you've called them the gift that keeps on giving, like on the show before, and, and you know, um, but I think they're on their way out. I think they're about to stop giving because it just seems like they're they're kind of losing all of their traction and their support. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I don't really have much more on that. Phoebe, what do you think? Well, it feels like the Republican Party have been searching desperately for a replacement for the NRA, the National Rifle <laughs> Association. The National Rifle Association <laughs> fell flat. It ran out of money. It did really bad here. They've been desperate, desperate to find some organization that will slide in and take the place that the NRA used to take. Mums for Liberty came along and they went, yes, anti-LGBT, anti-trans candidates and elections. That's how you win. That's how you win. Oh, 2023 midterms. <laughs> <laughs> 
I think well, your absolute... description is overly generous, Phoebe. Yep. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> what a what an horrific night they had across America. The overwhelming number of Mums for Liberty candidates failed to get elected or lost re-election. And the number one thing that voters said was, we just want people on school boards who will focus on educating children. <laughs> Nothing else. Not Such this. a radical agenda. I mean, I mean, blimey. No. I mean, none of this ephemera book bans that we've covered before, anti-LGBT legislation, don't say gay bills in Florida, Disney being blackboarded. Nobody <laughs> votes on those things in a school board election. They go, they turn around and go, well, who's best for my kid? It doesn't matter whether you're left, right, center, up, down, in or out. People are going to turn around and go, are you best for this seat? You start shouting around about other things. No matter who you are, people are just going to get turned off by you. Genuinely, they're just going to get absolutely turned off. But I was disappointed in the article. This article was disappointing because it stooped to the same levels that Mums for Liberty stooped to. It focused on using sex as something to hook into. It was like, oh my God, he had a threesome. And that's the kind of thing I expect Mums for Liberty to shout about. Salon.com, on the other hand, decided to make that part of the article and part of his shame. That did seem weird. That did seem and, kind of and weird. And that was really yeah. disconcerting and really mm. disappointing because these idiots on both sides of this article, the subject and the author and the publication for that matter, are perpetuating this myth that a man and a woman or a man and a man, or a woman and a woman, or however many people you want mm -hmm. in a room, or whatever your sexual identification or gender identification is, choosing consensually, in private, harming nobody else, having sex, is something to be shamed. What? This isn't the 1950s. This isn't 1850s Victorian England where showing your ankle was enough to get you blacklisted. We have to move away from this sex is shameful garbage. And the article itself detracted from the most important thing here. A person in political power who has accused others of being dangerous based on sex is now charged with being a sexual predator. That's where it was. He was accusing a group of criminality based on sex, and he himself is now facing charges of criminality based on sex. Not, oh my God, him and his wife had a threesome. Let's laugh and giggle and all be school children because we've got <laughs> nothing better to do. Go, <laughs> for fuck's sake, Salon, get your act together. We did get Phoebe's uh, little giggle there recorded, right? So we just, I just want to make sure we got that. Okay, good. Sorry, infidel, go ahead. I'm so angry at this crap. <laughs> One thing that I, I think that does make the threesome relevant and probably why it played such a big role in the story is how they've tied themselves to this mindset of religious purity. I mean, Ziegler has said her aim is and literally to quote to bring religious values into public schools. And she referred to public schools as indoctrination centers for the radical left. 
She's teaching an What's agenda. What's that got to do with threesomes? Well, man, the I, I Bible, can... and where did these people get off saying oh. that threesomes are a no-no? I don't uh, think I've ever heard any one of these religious loons I, I, turn I'm around not... and say a threesome is a no-no. <laughs> I, I'm not going to be able to give you a scripture verse, but I, I will say that when, when they go to church next Sunday... Uh, they will be looked at differently, and the viewpoint of the people around them will have a different perspective because of that. Christians don't let reality get in the way of truth, even when it comes to judging each other. In fact, uh, Christians love judging each other maybe more than they enjoy judging us. Probably <laughs> not, but it, it's it's a close run. I mean, that that's why we see so many different denominations, so many sects, so many split offs, so many disagreements among each other, because at the end of the day, it's someone wanting to keep the control for themselves. Now, with back to Mons for Liberty, though, I, Phoebe, you mentioned they're absolutely getting hammered in the last uh last election. The 2023 they midterm they, elections, they, they, they didn't want to talk slated. They, they did. They got absolutely destroyed. Um, and the good thing is, is that people are getting tired of this. People, as you said, are learning that we just want people that do the job of a school board and not someone who's going to be everything else. And, you know, Bridget herself, she's diversified, too. Uh, she's also part of uh, DeSantis's board uh, against Disney and his uh, anti-LBGTQ a uh, fight against uh, Disney that he riled up and, and keeps losing. He, she, she's part of that as well. So when it comes down to it, this, this is a couple who are tied in to a variety of organizations very close to the whole uh, DeSantis camp. You know, I, I, I've got to say that, uh, you know, we, we, we see these groups screaming, save the kids from the rooftop. But as, as you said, we see the same things. This this projection is working thin. And I, I do think it's lost its luster. And I, I think that we are going to see them die a slow and painful death, or at least I hope a slow and agonizing for every moment. Uh, but on the bright side, Scott. <laughs> On the bright side, there's a hot off the presses news addition to this story just today. Um, it, it, it's uh, <clears throat> Phoebe, you were mentioning about how they were using the threesomes as like the, the clickbait, right? That's the attention grabber. And they were they were clouding over the, uh, the important, you know, there's somebody here that's accused of a harmful crime. And so and but here they're talking about all oh, parties and whatever. Right. And so um, so in the story released today. Bridget Ziegler, uh, her Sarasota County Board uh, School Board colleagues have approved a, re a resolution to call for her resignation. Now, the story said that it was because of the three-way sexual relationship. And, but now you have me wondering if that's just the reporting of the resolution. So I didn't read the actual resolution. Um, and so I don't know if, if that's, you know, what was the reason. But for whatever reason it is, she's been asked to uh, resign. And so I think we would all agree that having a threesome is in no way reflective of her ability to perform on, on uh, the Sarasota County School Board. Um, however, I, I don't think anybody, any of us would shed too many tears if she was, uh, you know, given the old heave ho. So my question, uh, and we just got a, a minute or so left here. My, my quick question for the panel is, if she were removed because of this, do the ends justify the means? Eli? That's really close. I think I, I would prefer that she be removed for a legitimate reason, right? For something that actually is wrong. I wouldn't want to be like, oh, well. It was right, but will you take it? Would you take it? I might. <laughs> yeah, I think it's, <laughs> you know, count your blessings. Right, right. Phoebe, what do you think? Ends no, justify the means here? No, it's democracy being undermined. This is why I believe in recall elections. It's 22 caliber actions in a 357 Magnum world here. <laughs> Oof. Beat that. Follow that one, Infidel. <laughs> well, I, I won't even try. I'm, I'm, I'm still w waiting for the slow death, so maybe a pellet gun. <laughs> <laughs> I want it to be slow and agonizing, remember? Mm, but that's seriously, true. 
no, I, 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 I don't like, I mean, the idea of her getting out of office, it, it makes me feel happy and warm on the inside. But the truth is, no, uh, the ends doesn't justify the means. And as much as I might find personal dissatisfaction, I, I, I would hate to see that as a reason for her to go. Yeah. I'd rather her stand there and look like a fool and a, as, as an example of a liar and let her stay in the public eye so we could point and say that's what a, that's what a person who says one thing and does another does mm -hmm. so no please bridget stay by all means don't resign fight it stick <laughs> around and we'll laugh all the way to the end well at least i will scott are you are you are you advocating a rod blago situation in illinois where he stayed to the bitter end and must be impeached by a majority of the illinois senate are you are you advocating that kind of democracy well you know i i i, I have my concerns about democracy in general if i want to be completely honest for those, so, who, for those of you who don't know rod blago was the guy who tried to sell barack yep. obama's senate seat to right. burris he sold right, it to right, burris right, right. yeah he yeah, tried to sell it but democracy at the end of the day is about accepting elections can be won by people you don't like yes right and Very that's important. the problem that the individuals seem to have with democracy i personally believe democracy is the way to elect people and the way to select um those who run from amongst us those who choose to put themselves forward and those right, who choose right, right. to represent the organization they're representatives not delegates right and the way how you enhance democracy is you have the ability to say, voters, person X did this. Do you agree with what they did and should they stay in office as a result? A recall election, not fuck off, you stupid idiot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, I, I think for me, I would say I probably wouldn't be too bummed out if, if she was removed from office, but I don't think it would reflect well for the reasons that you've all yeah. uh, given. I don't think it would reflect well on the committee that they would remove her for that particular reason. For personal choices. Um, yeah, and yeah, and so I think this would be uh, an excellent spot for us to wrap up this discussion here. And so if you want to know more, click right here.